time feel. We've talked about it. Yeah. It's got like a slippery kind of thing. Oh, I yeah. call it the rubber band. The rubber band, uh, right. And the band pulls one way, the band gets pulled another way. The other players can kind of interact in around it. Can you talk about some, um, you know, other rhythmic ideas that uh, I know you've mentioned playing on one string has, has been an important part of uh, maybe developing some of this? Yeah, this is a really, playing on one string is a really interesting one. It's, um, I, I think actually, I mean, I, I can't take credit for any of these things, obviously, but, but this one, I, I remember having discussions with an old friend of mine, Mick Goodrick, who's a wonderful player and teacher, and we were in school together, and he used to talk about playing on one string, and I believe Jim Hall has talked to me sure. about playing on one string. I think he said he used to tape some of the strings yeah. so he wouldn't, he couldn't play on them. Yeah, play a whole tune just on yeah. one string. Yeah. So think about it. Let's, why don't we, maybe we could do that. We sure. could take this, let's take this tune that we've just been dealing with. Okay. Okay. And, uh, this is a lot of fun. I may really mess this up, you know. We may have to do this. This may be like take ten by the time you see it, you know. Because playing on one string is a kind of a tricky thing. But you know what, like, before we do the tune, I thought of an idea. Why don't we just take a static harmony and do it? I just got some something I wanted to, to demonstrate. Okay. Maybe jumping right into the tune is kind of a, a little much. Let's take a, a little harmony, something that might actually start that tune, like a... We had discussed, what, like a B flat, B flat over, over B flat E. B flat over E, another one of my old friends. B flat over E. Actually, what I was doing there was I started out playing on the, only on the B string against this tonality, and then I switched to the E string and played only on the E string, and then I started to combine the two. I mean, the, the interesting thing about this kind of playing, this really is, it's almost like Indian music. You know, it's, it's like you have to find where the notes are on one string. It's like, mm. you know, you've got no pattern, you've got no scale, you've got no position. All you've got is like this one long string, and everything exists on this string. You can't play licks either. You can't play licks. How you, well, I mean, I suppose if you practiced hard enough, yeah, you could learn true, how to yeah. play licks on one string. One fingered licks. One fingered yeah. licks. Okay. See, but basically, I would take a scale or sound and try to work through it. So you notice I have to slide. Down to the other string. It instantly kind of gets you into a different frame of mind. Now we're not thinking of bebop anymore. It's, it's very melodic, and you really have to find a note on the string. Now, right now, we're just dealing with one sound, but let's say if we take this concept and we apply it to a song. And since we've been dealing with our old friend, I mean, uh, Stella by Starlight, sure. let's just keep on that one, because that's a hard tune because it moves through a lot of, a lot of keys. So I'm going to improvise with John's accompaniment on one string to Stella by Starlight. Let's say I'll play a chorus on the E string. Of course, on the B string, and then I'll combine the two. But never show my fingers leave my hand. Thank you. It's the art of illusion. All right. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Losing it, you know. Hope so. If the, you know, yeah. if you fall down, you know, you, you have to get back up again. You know, you have to survive in the sea of chords or the, or the rhythm feel. Sometimes you, I find when you we're playing like this and you you stretch it. I mean, I may lose the rhythm of what I'm playing a little bit and have to get back. Or John may lose where he is with me, or I may lose the the harmony for a second. But it doesn't matter. And it also brings up true. the element of, of trust. You know, like yeah, I was just going to say. It that. sounded like maybe he was a a beat ahead no he's just his time with time feel was a little ahead of mine at one point and I just adjusted or he adjusted somehow we did it and it all, it all worked out and nobody was hurt I mean that's the main thing nobody nobody gets hurt in these situations we don't want that and I did cheat once I hit the G string <laughs> but you can see how it makes you play all of a sudden you're playing things that you would never you could never conceivably play if you were practicing scales they don't exist in that in that world of running up and down the scale no matter what degree you're going from it's just it's not there it's not included so again this puts you really in contact with what you're hearing and what you're feeling you have to feel your way through this stuff and you have to learn to survive maybe the key word survival the one thing that we eventually arrive at it's all important one could say is the foundation for it all is rhythm so one thing I, I like to do in my playing um, is to phrase things so they don't always fall exactly on the beat. And we always refer to uh, this in the jazz uh, vernacular as playing across the bar or over the bar line. So in other words, the phrases aren't always landing on one or specific beats. They float more. Sometimes I just think of words that, you know, see how they'd make me feel a certain way, like float, you know. It sounds different than uh, uh, another word. I mean, float has it brings to mind an image, you know, floating as opposed to like marching or something. You know, so float across the bar, lay back, laid back behind the beat, on top of the beat, straight down the middle. And these are all different terms that people use to describe a rhythmical feel. Maybe they'll say, yeah. Boy, his, he really plays laid back. His phrases are laid back. Man, he's really behind the beat. If he got any more behind the beat, he'd be falling down. Or, you know, God, he really plays on top. He plays on top of the beat. So there always, there's all these references are to the beat. So I think a thing to do, what we'd like to do now, is, is, is play a blues. And I'm going to try to demonstrate, in a very natural way,